measurement of nutritional status is something we struggle with even on a daily basis in the clinics I work on. I work in just trying to get accurate measurements, even in the hospital setting. And I've also tried to do this like in the picture in the field and when I worked in Central America going kind of house to house with them. And that was even more difficult. Um, so anthropometry is a measurement of body parameters to indicate nutritional status. Um, and in, we, we can use it in two different ways, depending on the work you're doing in the hospital versus if you're doing more public health work and looking at systems things. Um, so you're looking at who has adequate nutrition and who is malnourished. And then you can use it on the population level to, do, to collect data um, for public health interventions. Um, so with, this is kind of a trick question. Um, which of the following children has malnutrition? So this two-year-old in Vietnam or this, this three-year-old in Nepal? And this is a child similar age to this three-year-old. Um, and you can see that this child has, um, has acute malnutrition and wasting, and this child has chronic malnutrition or stunting. Um, and chronic wasting will lead to stunting. Um, so whom to measure from a public health perspective, usually children six to 59 months of age. Um, these are the children who are most vulnerable. It's, you know, the first six months, they tend to be breastfeeding. Um, and um, it's before complementary food is really needed. Um, so these are where interventions have typically targeted. Um, and um, Nutritional status of children is also a proxy for overall population as you're looking at adults and elderly as well. Um, if children are malnourished, then adults are probably even worse off because as you know, parents tend to give everything they can to their kids um, and sacrifice for themselves. So, um, and um, women of childbearing age is another kind of public health focus since that affects the intergenerational nutritional status and health. Um, so, um, in terms of calculations, are you guys using the WHO curves? It's hard for me to see your response. So we have CDC and WHO curve, and then there are also country-specific growth curves. Um, and the standard is really used to use the WHO um, because it's collected from six countries and it has very strict kind of criteria in terms of which kids they included. Um, Classification is using z-scores, um, percentiles, less so um, percent median. I think that's falling out of favor. Um, so this is just another picture of the WHO growth standards, which is kind of the standard of care. Um, and in patients with atypical anatomy, so kids with cere cerebral palsy who, you know, you can't really get a height because they have contractures, kids with limb abnormalities, like this child with this uh, actually adult with caudal regression syndrome, you can still use mid-upper arm circumference. That's the easiest thing. Um, you can also measure kind of fat stores by tricep skin fold values. And you can look at arm span as a proxy for height. Thank you. So that's how you met. We're, we're doing measurements. Thank you.